Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have an excellent game to share with you from the 2023 FIDE World Cup. I think you need your strategic cap on for this one. On the white end, Magnus Carlsen, and he's playing against Nihat Abasov. Okay, we have a Sicilian defense, Rosalimo attack, an early imbalance with the minor pieces and structure. After d6, what move would you play here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, in the game, it's e5. Excellent move. We're going to have a closer look at what many of the points are behind this advance soon enough. But first, let me just note that if you do not play e5 and instead approach this in a bit of a slower way, you can easily end up worse. What am I talking about? Well, let's say you castle and move upon and develop a knight. Black is already for choice. Excellent pawn break. Good news for rook once on the f-file. Good news as well for the light square bishop to break down pawns that are on light. The light square bishop in this environment, in this structure, will have no problem playing a productive role. Compare that with what happens in the game. Pay special attention to the light square bishop in this game. We continue with e5, d takes e5. White has already gained a little something, doubled and now isolated c pawns. White has no interest with his play in this game to simply recapture the pawn. He has a deeper idea in mind. In this game, he goes with d3. Let's have a look at, though, what could happen after knight takes e5. Sharp position to be sure. This is considered one of the best follow-ups. These are a couple of replies. Let's just go with this one. It's a messy position, but at least balanced material-wise at the moment. Additionally, here is a way black can go wrong. This last move, I think, may tempt a lot of players to go with queen d4. Seems like black is winning. Not the case, though. It's a sneaky queen trap. After queen takes rook, knight c3, she's stuck. Officially a cornered queen. There's no way out. These two keep her in, and white just needs to clear out some pieces, something like this. And she will soon have to give herself up for a rook. And in this imbalanced position, queen versus two rooks, white is for choice. Okay, Carlson's play is with d3. This reminds me a lot of the games by Alpha Zero, Leela Chess Zero, this deep strategic idea to give away a pawn. For what reason? Well, in large part in this position, to play against a piece, a certain piece, the light square bishop. We saw this time and time again with Alpha Zero games, Leela Chess Zero games. A little material is given up, and then some piece was embarrassed. Its mobility was significantly restricted. That's what's happening here. The pawn has been given up. In that earlier variation, the e-pawn was able to advance, but not here. On its current diagonal, staring at a pawn. Not productive. You're going to go to the main diagonal. Same story. You're going to go here. I'm not sure what exactly you're doing on that diagonal either. At some point, you could be biting on a rock. Pawn could be established on c4. This light square bishop is a struggling piece. And in a way, the black king as well has a bit of a question mark over his head. Is queenside castles now a comfortable safe haven for the king with these pawns doubled and isolated? Both flanks for the white king seem perfectly reasonable still in this position. Okay, let's see how play develops. In short, with d3, white is giving up a pawn, but saying your light square bishop is a clown now. We continue. f6, knight b to d2. White has a close eye here on two pawn breaks. There is a difference here with move order. If the knight is not put here straight away, but instead 
let's say white fianchettos, this is where black could say, you know what? I'm going to get this pawn out of the way to damage your structure. I'm going to give that pawn right back so that I could eventually move this guy and have a clear view for my light square bishop. So, knight b to d2. Now, if you try and pitch this pawn, the knight can simply recapture. Excellent post for the knight, and the structure stays cool. All right. In this game, knight h6, rook g1. This doesn't have a name, this particular variation, but it reminds me of the move out of the Sicilian Nidorf after black goes with a6 in the Sicilian Nidorf. Rook g1 has a name. It's called the freak attack. Okay? White is <laughs> looking to advance this g pawn. When you see rook g1, you know it's coming. This pawn is ready to be launched. He has an eye on cracking open the g file, potentially. He's also going all in. He's saying, all right, I'm not going to castle kingside, so I have my eye more so on queenside castles if you're playing rook to g1. He's trying to expedite this pawn play. You could support it. You could support g4 by going h3. You know, you just go one step with the pawn, but no. Rook g1. He wants to go two with the g pawn, and if necessary, he's going to go two with the h pawn so he could try to get in g5. He's going all in. He's kind of saying, you're not going to feel so comfortable, king, if you hang a right. And I already know you're not going to feel super comfortable castling queenside because of these isolated pawns everywhere. Okay. Where do we go from here? Bishop a6. Now, a lot of time was spent on this one. This was the main think here by black at this stage in the game. Uh, what is considered best instead of bishop to a6? The computer likes queen to a5, and I'd like to throw this position to you as a pop quiz. What move would you play here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, the computer suggestion is to play king f1. Why? Why is the computer going with king to f1? Well, let's test out a different move to maybe get a better understanding. Let's say you develop a new piece. This is where black could not only give the pawn back, but play a position uh, in gambit style. He could give two pawns back in order to damage white's structure and activate the clown. Here, with c4. The knight is pinned after queen a5. There is no knight takes c4 here. b takes c. e4. The knight can't recapture again. d takes e4. Black is now up a pawn, but guess what? This e pawn gets to move. And this bishop, once a clown, is now a star piece on e6. What is it not doing? Perfect piece. The unopposed light square bishop on e6. This needs to be taken into account. This is part of the reason why, or the main reason why, after this best move, queen a6, the computer wants to get out of this pin. Wants to be in a spot to meet c4 now with knight takes c4. Okay. In this game, it is bishop a6. From here, g4. Consistent follow-up after rook g1. Knight f7. Queen e2. Yet again, still not going with bishop to g bishop to b2. Queen has an eye on these two pawn breaks still. Bishop e7. Bishop b2 now. Queen a5. C4. So the computer's pointing out you could already rush in with g5, but now that this knight is pinned. His reply, c4, he is just shutting down this light square bishop. He's not giving black an opportunity to play c4 in this position. This remains a struggling piece. All right, from here, it's g5, h4. Need to support g5. If you have to take away from the center, forget about it. 
Your central point E5 collapses, the game is going to be over. You must be in a spot to take towards the center. Okay, the rook comes back over, mission accomplished, he got that G4 advance in. He's in a favorable position here when we consider these two rooks. It's white who decides when the position opens, when the H file opens. Queenside castles met with queenside castles. So white is offering up now a second pawn. That would be poison. White went into a pretty big think in here. Uh, he had a, a big think here about 20 20 plus minutes taking the pawn is not a good idea it would be a losing move queen takes a king c2 is threatening to trap the queen and she'd have to run away this is not a good pawn to take a new file has opened up towards the king there's ideas for maybe a skewer a2 in short is poison so queen simply goes back knight improves G takes h4, knight takes h4. Where do we go from here? The idea is to try and break this position open. White knows long term that his king is safer. He has this nice structure. If we do the comparison on the queen with the queen side structures, pawn island of four, and we have all isolated pawns for the black king. How can we maybe try to find a way in? Let's try and blast open the center in some way. Here it goes. F4. A pawn break is in there. White wants at F6. Throughout all of this complications in the center, guess who's not playing? Who's not a contributor? This guy here, tamed by the structure alone. From here, E takes f4, knight takes f6. We're not immediately recapturing. We can take e6 with check and then recapture. There's no e6 pawn anymore, so now at least this guy has a path back into activity. He has to first underdevelop. Bishop c8, rook d to e1, Queen takes F, Rook takes G, very sharp position. I believe right around here, it's basically a rapid time control. Queen D2, Knight is improving, King C2. I thought there might be a trick here for Black. It's not working though. If you're thinking in this position about Rook takes Knight, preparing to meet Rook takes Rook with this massive fork, that would not be good to play rook takes knight in this position because of first bishop takes knight. And then you recapture and you're just up the exchange. Okay, so this is not working. Black goes with king b7, probably the better color square to be on with this guy around. From here, rook e3. Queen e7, knight f5. We're going to get a minor piece exchange in and a pair of rooks come off. This is around an even position. Have to do something about the bishop. It's defended. This is where white now goes wrong. He puts the queen on h2. So he spent about nine minutes on this move and black's reply spent about a minute. He ends up playing rook to g6. There is one winning move here for black. I wonder if you can spot it. Feel free to pause the video. Okay, not easy to come up with uh, these only winning moves in an open position like this, but the best move is queen to f1. And now white is kind of all pinned up. Uh, what do you do exactly? This guy can't move any move by the bishop and there's going to be this fork you can't take this pawn because after rook takes rook queen takes rook there's going to be this fork so white is in a really tough spot if black would have spotted queen to f1 not sure how to even proceed here if there's some passing move if white just sits here's how black can play 
rook g6 now, hinting at rook g2 or even rook g1, black is getting at the white king first, even though there is this safer shelter for the white king. Each side is trying to angle in to the king positions. Black would have got there first if he found king, uh, excuse me, queen f1 here. In this game, though, it's rook g6. Bishop cuts off the queen from seeing a couple squares. She can now not get to f1. Rook f6. Bishop e3 with an eye on c5 with an eye on the second rank as well. The c5 pawn is going to fall. Two attackers, no defenders. Okay, from here, bishop f5. That's move 36. The first active move for the light square bishop. Better late than never. <laughs> it's finally activated. This is still considered a holdable position here. Okay, we have bishop takes c5. Queen g6. This is where, it, I mean, both players are kind of going back and forth. The evaluation up and down. They are in blitz mode at this stage. Okay, in this game is king c3, rook e6, rook h4. It says in this position you could already go in for a sneaky tactic. Bishop takes a7 with the idea king takes bishop being met with rook, excuse me, queen f2 check, and then the queen and rook are on f5. That's how you get the material back, and then you're ready to get to the seventh rank. In this game, though, the rook backs off first. There's no longer pressure. Bishop to g4. Now he goes in for this capture on a7. Considered better is the centralization of the queen. Black has one way out after this move. Bishop takes a7, but he does not find it. In the game, queen f6 check is played. Considered best is queen g7 check. Still keeping a close eye on the bishop. That's one note. And another is keeping a close eye on the seventh rank. In particular, this c7 square. In some cases, the queen can pivot there. So let's have a look at this best line. This is a really interesting variation. Queen g7, the only drawing move. Why? Well, if you block with the bishop, there's some queen g5 exerting pressure on the rook, eyeing up a check on not only c1, but also a5. Also, if you go to b4, check this variation out. This is one of the coolest variations I think you'll see. <laughs> Let's see why I'm pointing that out, why I'm saying that. King takes bishop here. You're ready for these next four half moves. Every one of them is check. <laughs> Queen g1, and this continuation I'm pointing out is considered, uh, is leading to a drawn position. Here we go. Queen g1 check would be met with c5 check, would be met with queen c5 check, and then met with rook b6 check. I don't know how many more moves there are like that in the game, consecutive checks, but four in, a, four in a row, four half moves, all with check here. Apparently after king a3, this is some drawn position. All right, I had to highlight that continuation. Extremely rare drawn position from here. In this game though, queen f6 is played, so the king has to find a square, of course. The queen does not have defense of the bishop in this case, so the king can now step up to b4. In the game, it's rook e5. If the bishop is captured here, this is where we could see the big difference between queen on g7 versus f6. In this position, the queen could now make use of c7 with check and then simply take the bishop. She's not defending the bishop as well. From here, well, in this position, white is winning. Next up, getting to the eighth rank or seventh rank. Okay. In this game, the rook goes to e5. 
This rook is now pinned. I should have noted this earlier. There is a serious threat after bishop takes a7, the threat being queen b8 check, king a6, and queen b6 mate. So we're simply with d4 attacking a pinned piece. From here, queen e7 check, only one more move, c5, black resigns. There are no good follow-up checks. If the king takes the bishop, we take the rook with the pawn, not the queen, because she has this responsibility to defend the rook. And what else do you do? Any move by the rook, and it's a mate in two. For instance, rook e4, there's our mate in two in action. So at the end of the day, white in this position is simply soon going to be up material. It goes no further. Black resigns. Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.